information just keeps coming. We have the dev drop, the set seven learnings, teaser footage, which I've included a lot of it in this video, and the trait reveals on Twitter and YouTube. We have 10 more changes coming at us that we need to talk about. Some of these changes I also think are hinting at where the future of TFT is going to go. So for number 6 to 10, I'm going to tell you how I think these changes are going to propel this game into the future and what you can expect moving forward playing this game. If you don't hear a big change that you've already heard about, it's probably because I did cover it in my last video, so you're probably going to want to check that one out because I talk about 10 major changes in that video as well. Let's not waste any time here and get right into it. Number one, this is an obvious follow-up since I already made such a big deal about it. The no assassins trait this set. The one reservation I had about that change is that I'm just going to go arrange carry in the backline every single game and then the game is solved. Not that fun. But surprise, enter the trait hacker. So this trait is going to allow one person to teleport to the back line and be invulnerable for a few seconds. So while it is not exactly an assassin, it's still something you are going to have to consider. I also think with some of the other changes they announced, there's probably going to be a possibility to make one of your other units go into the back line with them, which makes sense because that one unit probably can't destroy the entire back line on their own. And if they can, they will definitely be getting nerfed the very next patch. Number two, and now I'm not sure if this is just a cosmetic change for the set because the theme is Monsters Attack, but the PvE rounds are going to be changing a little bit where the, the monsters are going to be actually familiar faces from League of Legends. For example, you can see here, we're fighting a giant Urgot. So again, I'm not sure if this is just a change for this round or if they're going to start really getting innovative with these PvE rounds, but I think it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Next up, we can see some kind of familiar traits, but they're reworked for a more modern version of a game. So one example is uh, scholars that are now called civilians that just got released on Friday. Here's the twist. With civilians, the bonus is only active while those units are alive, so you can't just put them in there as a throwaway unit just to get the mana. As we've seen with units before, like Sorry, but Heimerdinger from set six. I just wanted the higher breakpoint. I never cared what happened to that unit. Sometimes I even place them in the front row. Another example is we just had Dragon Mancers in set seven and 7.5, and it is now reminiscent to supers, but instead of buffing one unit, as you reroll this comp, all of your units get a little bit stronger, which truly is more balanced, especially because they want the three, four, five cost units to seem more powerful than a three star two unit, a two cost unit, and that makes total sense. Another change coming our way for this set is that there's going to be a new game mode. I kind of thought there's very limited game modes that you could have with this type of game. However, they are clearly having a good idea and I have a feeling it is going to be something as an answer to all the people begging for the Star Guardian PvE game. And before we get into the juicy five, this is the number five change that is announced. And I think they're really leaning into different types of scalings other than just AD and AP. We saw with Malphite in set 7.5 in the Lagoon trait that he scaled with AP, but also with max health to give him a bit of a bigger shield. And now we have heard from the devs that more units are going to scale with max health or maybe max armor. We can see that in one of the clips, Ramus has all armor items, three Bramble vests built. So I have a feeling that his defense is scale with armor to give the same kind of gameplay style that we're getting in League of Legends. He's a very anti-AD type of champion. I think that will allow for even more creative builds and team composition. So I really like this change. All right, so we are at number six, which means we are on the back half of the video, the back half of the changes, and these are the changes that I think are going to affect the game, not only in this set, but I think they are testing this out for the future of the game to make it more complex without removing the accessibility that players need to get into this game. So we are seeing for the first time is we have a non-trait that is called threats. These threats, can synergize into any team because they don't actually synergize. I think this allows the development team to throw champions in that maybe necessarily don't fit into one of the skin lines or theme lines, but would have a positive impact on the game and now they don't have to exclude them. My only cautionary tale 
is that if they end up becoming like dragons from set seven, it is going to be annoying because basically if you don't play all the threat champs, you're not gonna get into the top two. And if that happens, I think that will be a problem. However, it doesn't seem like they're going to be that overpowered. I think they're just gonna be an additional carry that you can put into your team. But what I think this means for the future of the game is I think that they are trying to create more viable team comps because in a lot of the sets, it's the same few comps that just stomp every game and there's very few counters to them. And I don't think that that is necessarily as fun when you get up higher because the whole point of TFT is outsmarting your opponents, building the best board and adapting. And speaking of adapting, we have an adaptable trait. Number seven is the adaptable trait that you can customize, which is the admin trait. So I think this is a really interesting idea because if you unlock this trait, but you would normally go the damage route with the trait, but there's a really strong board that you know you're gonna be losing, you're thinking you're gonna have to lose streak, you could swap to making it more of an econ trait, and that way you don't have to sell all your units and start over with no build or go down a route that you know is not gonna get you into a top placing but you can pivot and use your critical thinking skills to advance you in the game. And that is what I think this game is all about. And that is what I think they're going to try to do moving forward. So before we get to my favorite change, we are going to talk about number eight, which is units that are going to affect the game once they're dead from the sidelines. We learned that there is a trait called mascot. And once they are dead, in the round, they go on the sidelines to cheer on your team and give you health regain. So it actually might be beneficial to have some units that die right away in the battle. And again, I think that makes the game a little bit more dynamic and you have to actually plan around that. I think we are going to start seeing more and more types of interactions in the game where it used to be very A, B, C, D. Now I think we're gonna throw in E, F, G that's gonna shake things up. Okay, so this is my favorite change that I've heard so far, and I'm gonna tell you why you should be excited about it as well. They are testing out a five cost unit that has a customizable ability, and that is Aphelios. And here's how I think it is going to work. We know in League of Legends that Aphelios has some crowd control with his weapons, some long range, some increased attack speed and all of these things are very situational and i think in tft one of the most frustrating things is when you get to the end of a game you know you're fighting somebody that you're just going to lose against because you have not enough cc or not enough dps i don't think just having a powerful five cost unit is enough anymore as we saw with bard in season 7.5 there was the side quest minigame type of mechanic where you gained an extra percentage to get bigger cost units in your shop. So yes, a bard's ability was effective, but a lot of times people would put bard in to ensure that they got some of their other five and four cost units appearing in the shop. And that I think is more of the fantasy of a five cost late game powerful unit versus just a high damage ability. So going back to Aphelios, if you know that you're fighting an opponent that is Breezing through the fight really quickly, maybe you switch to your DPS weapon so that you can do as much damage as possible to either not lose the round by as much or maybe even turn the tide so you win that round. Alternately, there's nothing more frustrating than feeling like you have to itemize a 5 cost when you already have a perfectly good carry. So maybe you get the Aphelios and you know that you're just going to use that unit for the CC gun that is going to slow or stun enemies into place, which again gives you more choices and makes the game more dynamic. I think we are going to see a lot more of this in the 5 cost because I think it is clear that the 5 cost units have to offer something different than just just being the highest damage unit that you get at the end of the game. And the last change that I think could affect the game very long term, and I am a little hesitant on it, but I'm hopeful, is the hero augments. This is going to make your units a little bit more customizable throughout the game by adding effects, damage, or even maybe effects to your allies so that it makes the units that you get a little bit more impactful in situations where they normally wouldn't be. 
where I think this is good is I think it will open up way more team compositions and because the hero augments are going to be so random game to game and you can never rely on getting those augments, it's not going to make that one hero augment stomp every single game because that augment might not even come up. I think this will make players have to be more on their toes and more adaptable game to game, which I think is good for the health of the game because it rewards people that can pivot and think critically versus memorize the most popular comp that happens to be stomping every single lobby. Where I think this could go sideways is if these hero augments do end up making people overpowered and as soon as you hit that one augment that's going to make that hero champion unit overpowered it is going to make you force that comp and then it's still going to stomp the lobby so then maybe the game is solved by whoever gets that one augment and i don't think that's good so i'm hoping the hero augments are cool and impactful but not too overpowered. Let me know what your favorite change that you've heard so far is going to be. If you didn't hear your own favorite, again, watch my first video, I probably mentioned it there. And based on how much information we're getting every single day, I'm probably going to have to make a part 3, so follow along for more. Let's go set 8, it's coming within a month, I can't wait.